The year is 2009, one year after GTA 4 has been released and well, it's 2009, which means that you've witnessed the entire market nearly having a heart attack when everyone saw what Noctua, a small Austrian cooling manufacturer, launched onto the market. This is, or was, the Noctua NH-D14, a flagship CPU cooler that was released no less than 12 years ago. Yes, 2009 has been that long before, get over it. And why are you watching a review of a cooler that has been on the market for over 12 years? Because the Noctua NH-D14 is still being sold brand new around the world. Yes, this cooler is discontinued, but the stocks are still plentiful. Speaking of which, the Noctua NH-D14 is available for around 89.90 US dollars or euros, while the newer Noctua NH-D15 is priced at around 99.95 US dollars or euros. So, between these two coolers, there's only a 10 US dollars price difference. Now that you know why this video exists and its purpose, it's time to actually review the thing, and we start with the design. The NHD14 has the iconic Noctua tan and brown color scheme, much like the rest of the Noctua range, with the exceptions of that being the Redux series and the newer Chromas Black editions. For some reason, this 12-year-old CPU cooler does not look dated at all, in fact, it still looks quite sharp with the smaller fan at the front and a bigger one inside the heatsink, giving the whole cooler a more aerodynamic look, even though the cooler itself is not really that aerodynamic. The NHD14, much like its successor, the NHD15, has a dual tower heatsink design and uses mostly aluminum and copper in its construction. The heatsink uses around 45 aluminum-made cooling fins, that's 45 fins per tower. So, in total, the heatsink has around 90 fins. The top of the cooler is simple in design, with only the Noctua logo stanced into the surface of the heatsink. The NHD14 has 6 copper-made heat pipes, which are shaped into the classic U-shape. This is done to allow the heat pipes as much contact as possible with the cooling fins. Not only that, but having U-shaped heat pipes also creates the dual tower heatsink design. Each heat pipe has an outer diameter of 6mm and its copper surface is nickel plated for increased reliability and to better match the rest of the cooler. In addition, the heat pipes are soldered directly to the backside of the base plate of the cooler and also soldered to the cooling fins. Soldering two surfaces together, in this case, the heat pipe with the base plate ensures the best possible heat transfer. The heat pipe endings are not covered by caps, but fortunately they are machined to be more or less symmetrical, and thus they look quite nice. It's worth mentioning this, as many coolers, even modern ones, have their heat pipes endings not symmetrical at all. At least some of them are covered by caps. The base plate of the heatsink is made from the same nickel plated copper as the heat pipes. The surface of this base plate is flat and smooth, with just a subtle sunburst pattern present on its surface. More than likely, this was left from the manufacturing process, but it will not affect the evenness of the thermal compound spread. The Noctua NH-D14 uses two fans. The front fan is a standard 120mm model, while the middle fan is a round 140mm model. The front fan is a Noctua NF-P12 PWM. This fan has a minimum rated speed of 300 rpm and a maximum rated speed of 1300 rpm. The 140mm fan located in the middle is a Noctua NF-P14 PWM. This fan has a maximum speed of 1200 rpm. Unfortunately, both fans have 4 pin connectors which means that you can easily connect them to your motherboard and control them through your software. The accessories included with this cooler are the usual bundle that Noctua offers. First of all, all the accessories are packaged in a separate box, which fortunately has a diagram of everything included, so you can stop asking yourself if you have all the pieces or not. We start with the user manual, which is printed in no less than three different versions. Then we have a metallic Phillips screwdriver, a splitter to power both fans from a single motherboard fan header, two different low noise adapters and a tube of thermal compound. Afterwards, there are also the components of the Noctua Secofilm mounting system, which includes a metal backplate, plastic spacers, metal nuts, mounting arms for both the Intel and AMD sockets, and plenty of bolts. The installation of this cooler is fairly easy, as it uses the latest version of the Secofirm mounting system. First, you take the backplate and install it at the back of the motherboard. Then you place the correct spacers for your socket onto the backplate studs 
on the front of the motherboard and then place the mounting arms over the studs. You then secure them with these metallic nuts and finally you apply the thermal compound on the CPU and install the heatsink of the cooler. Finally, you place the fans onto the heatsink and connect those to the correct fan headers on your motherboard and you're done. With the cooler installed in a regular system, you get to see just how big the NHD14 is. Mind you, the NHD15 isn't any smaller, but still, this CPU cooler is massive. And this is where the never-ending issue lies with these type of coolers, the clearance. First of all, the front fan covers all four RAM slots of the motherboard, and thus all RAM modules installed. Fortunately, there is still some space left under the front fan for a medium-sized RAM kit to fit, but don't expect some tall RGB-enabled RAM kits models to fit because they won't. The graphics card clearance is alright, just alright, with what looks to be 25mm of space between the sides of the heatsink and the backplate of the graphics card. As is the usual with a CPU cooler review, before we get to test its cooling performance, it's good to hear how it actually sounds like. I am doing this because while a decibel value is useful, it does not take into account unwanted noises such as bearing ticking or vibrations of the heatsink. With both fans running at their maximum speeds, the Noctua NHD14 reached a maximum noise output of 39 decibels. This was achieved with the measuring device placed at a distance of 10 cm away from the system and the CPU cooler. To test all CPU coolers, the Intel i9-9900K CPU is used. However, the CPU runs at both its factory settings and frequency and then it is overclocked manually to 5 GHz on all cores. The first test uses the Intel Burntest V2 benchmark, a synthetic benchmark which places a load on the CPU. This is similar in severity with what you can expect when you are playing a modern AAA video game. And in this test, the Noctua NHD14 reached a maximum temperature of 61 degrees Celsius, with the ambient temperature set at 26 degrees Celsius. However, the next test is where all CPU coolers are pushed to their limits, some even above that. This test is using the FPU stability test of the AIDA64 Extreme software, a synthetic benchmark which places an unrealistically high load onto the CPU, something which you will rarely if ever encounter in your daily usage, unless of course you are perhaps rendering videos using the CPU as the only rendering unit. And in this test, the Noctua NHD14 reached a maximum temperature of 86 degrees Celsius with the same ambiental temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. This places the Noctua NHD14 at a mere 2 degrees Celsius behind the Noctua NHD15. The Noctua NHD14 is still a solid option for a modern system. While the cooler might have been released around 12 years ago, it can still hold its own, especially against the newer CPU coolers. With the price difference of just 10 US dollars or euros and the temperature difference of just 2 degrees, on average, the NHD15 is still a better CPU cooler. However, there are few reasons to make the jump from the NHD14S to the NHD15. However, if you don't want the NHD15 for whatever reason and want the NHD14 instead, then by all means go for it. This cooler, while it remained the same in terms of its performance, it has been updated, the packaging is better and the mounting system is pretty much the same one used on the newer CPU coolers. The sound performance is also good for a cooler with two fans and plenty of wind resistance on the heatsink. And finally, the issues that still stand with the NHD14 is the clearance. You won't get much space for the RAM slots and the graphics card clearance is just right. Not that great. In the end, the Noctua NHD14 is a great CPU cooler that if found for the right price, it is still a solid choice for both gaming and also overclocking your CPU. The installation process is very easy thanks to the updated mounting system and the noise output is not that high. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the subscriber star pages of this channel.